Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Yarn and You Girl podcast. I'm Janine, also known as Yarn and You Girl. And this is my podcast about knitting, mostly. Sometimes I talk about crochet and sewing and other craft projects I might be involved in at the time, but it's mostly about knitting because knitting is what I am obsessed with. I love this community. I love coming on here and podcasting for you guys. I feel like when I watch uh, knitting podcasts, I get so much inspiration and um, I feel such a part of the community that I really wanted to give some of that back and I love doing this and putting my little bit of creative mojo and out into the universe. So thank you so much if you are checking me out for the first time and thank you also so much if you are returning because I love you guys. I love this community. They're just an amazing group of people and um, yeah, I have such a good time being here with you. So If you are looking for me on the internet, you can find me on Ravelry as Yarn and You Girl. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all as Yarn and You. And um, you can check out the website too, which is yarnandyou.com. I also um, post show notes on the website and on the Ravelry group page, which is the Yarn and You Girl podcast group. So I just need to apologize though, real quick and get this out of the way. I want to apologize for not putting up the show notes until uh, for last week's episode. I just put them up yesterday. So I am really, truly sorry about that. I don't have any excuse except for I was being lazy. So I put them up last night and they are on the Ravelry group page and they are also on the website. So um, if you were looking for the show notes, if you were interested in any of the projects that I was talking about last time I did a show, I, um, they're there now. Sorry. Mm. I'll try, I'm trying to be better. I know that um, I will have show notes for this one because I actually already worked on them. But last week I, I did it kind of on the fly, off the cuff or whatever you want to call it, and I hadn't uh, done any show notes, so I had to kind of do them after the fact, and that isn't always as good. Anyway, <laughs> I also wanted to say thank you to all of my um, current subscribers, you guys. I have over 200 now, and I'm so excited because I was talking last time about doing some kind of 200 subscriber giveaway and I have a really cool prize for that now and I think you guys will love it but I want to wait to show you what the the prize is because uh, it kind of has a little bit of a story that goes with it too. So um, I will be putting up a 200 subscriber giveaway thread in the Ravelry group. So be sure to go into the Ravelry group um, page, which is the, like I said, the Yarn and You Girl podcast group and look for the 200 subscriber thread. There'll be a question in there. I'm thinking the question's gonna be something like, um, you know, sh- tell us your favorite, the, your most favorite project that you ever worked on and why it was your most favorite project. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there and see what we get. Maybe we'll get some very cool, very inspiring um, things and I would just love to to see what people liked. Maybe it was a sweater because it turned out really great or maybe it was a shawl because of the construction being unusual and so, you know, all sorts of fun little things. And so that's going to be on the 200 um, subscriber giveaway thread and there will be a very, very cool prize. But we'll talk about that at the end or toward the end where when I talk about acquisitions and things like that. Oh my God. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Guys, I yawn so big and you just all probably saw my tonsils. Sorry about that. (laughs) Um, Anyway, I will tell you guys a little bit about what I'm wearing today first before I get started. This is a shawl that I finished a while back. It's called the Cooney shawl. It's on Ravelry and it is 
one of my favorites because I like the triangle shape of it and it's very symmetrical and I'm kind of like I like symmetrical stuff um, I don't mind asymmetrical shawls but I like symmetrical shawls best because I feel like there's order to it which is just how it is but yeah Cooney shawl and the yarn I used is um, Sweet Georgia Tough Love sock in the grape jelly color way so if you're interested in knowing what this one is that is that's that's what it is and I made that last year but just felt like wearing it today I thought it went nice and such a bright color and I love it obviously I am addicted to purples and blues and pinks as you guys can tell by my project choices I feel like sometimes that's a little boring for you guys but that's what I got that's what I love and I do try to go out of my color comfort zone sometimes so I'm working on that but I know you know I want to be able to wear it too and for me um, the, the colors, those colors are the colors that I gravitate toward and I know that I will wear those colors. And so sometimes we shouldn't give ourselves so much um, guilt over, you know, always picking the same, you know, color choices because if we love them, then we know they'll, we'll get some use out of them. So I'm trying not to obsess, you know, be too miserable about the color choices that I make. Oh goodness. <sighs> this isn't going very well with all the yawns already and we're only six minutes in. I'm gonna need another coffee I think and it's probably gonna have to be a double. I just, I don't know. I get plenty of sleep guys. I go to bed at a decent hour. I'm an old lady. I go to bed at like 9, 9.30 most nights. And I get up, you know, I do get up kind of early, like 5.30, 6, depending on the day. But I don't understand the yawning thing. Every time I get on the podcast, that's all I, I got for you guys. It's a big old mouth of yawns. So maybe I need to... Maybe I'm not getting enough oxygen to my brain. Oh, see, here it goes again. <laughs> Do I, I, maybe I have a yawning medical condition. I have no idea. But anyway, that's, that's what it is. Sorry, you guys get to see my tonsils half of the show. Um, so let's move on and stop talking about my tonsils. Yeah. Um, I have a couple finished objects today and they're something that I just started and finished in the last two weeks. So I haven't even shown you guys. There's no real work. There was no real work in progress. Um, but I, well, let me just, let me just go into it. Um, I made two. The first one, they're both the same pattern and the pattern is Banff. It's a Tin Can Knits color work hat. And this is the gray. I used the same base on both of the both of the hats. The gray is Sun Valley Fiber Arts. And the color is Kent. And I did a sweater out of this. A while back and I had some leftovers and it's a merino cashmere nylon a 80 10 10 and um, it's very soft super nice and then the white is some random white cotton I think even I'm not even sure that I had in my stash and I wanted to make my nephew Jameson a new baby hat because I made him the Tin Can Knits Barley hat a while back out of some green and yellow because they're a family of duck fans, Oregon duck fans. So I made green and yellow, but 
I saw him the other day at the Christmas tree hunt and he was wearing the hat, but his little head is getting so big. It was like exploding. I felt like the hat was being, you know, stretched to the point. So um, I wanted to make him a new hat for Christmas, but um, so I started this one and I did the toddler size and I thought, oh, this will be great, the toddler size. And you can't really tell, you know, how big it is when you're first starting because things are just kind of coming out as they are. But as I worked up the hat, I realized that uh, this is more like um, infant size and more like the size that he had when I first gave him the hat. So I thought, oh, well, that's not going to be good. But I didn't want to rip it all out because I worked so hard on this color work. Uh, and, uh, you know, and it looked really nice. I thought, okay, well, you know, so I can give this away. I can save this as a gift for somebody else who might be having a baby. Um, it would be perfect little baby shower gift. So I think that I will, excuse me, keep this one. Um, like I said, I did the toddler size, but I didn't realize this yarn is a worsted weight yarn. And I think even the white might've been a DK. I didn't realize, um, or I wasn't really thinking clearly because the Banff hat is in calls for an Aran weight yarn. So a lot thicker yarn, right? So smaller yarn, same needles, but you end up with a smaller size hat. So the toddler size, which should have been the right size, turned out to be more like an infant size. And I don't do swatch gauges very often, unless it's like for a sweater. I definitely don't do them for socks. I definitely don't do them for hats or scarves because I don't really care. I mean, they don't really need, like hats do kind of need to fit. Yes, I get, but... I don't, I don't do them. If it doesn't work out, I can, the hat's fast. I can pull it out. I can do it again. So the first one didn't work out, but I'm not going to pull this one out. I'm going to keep it. And I had just enough left over to do a second hat, but I did not, I didn't want to do the white. I thought this like this green color would look good. So the main body is also Kent in Sun Valley Fiber Arts. And the green is actually Barocco Vintage, and um, I had the ball band, and it's it doesn't have an actual color name. It's one of those where they give you just numbers for the color, but it's this green that I used when I made my son a Seattle Seahawks hat, and I thought with the gray, it looked really, really lovely. So this, because of the size of the other one coming out so small, I actually did, it, it came in infant, toddler, child, adult, small, medium, and adult, large. So I, this is actually the adult, small, medium, cast on size, but because of the gauge, again, I think it'll be perfect for his head. It's not quite big enough for my son's head, and he's 10, but you know, for a six month old and a year old, you know, when he finally, you know, I think this will be fine. And I would rather have it be a little bit bigger than too small because I would like him to have some time to kind of wear into it. So that is, those are my two finished objects. They're exactly the same. The pattern is Banff by Tin Can Knits. It's a great little color work pattern. Um, the chart, it's, it was important to pay attention to the chart. Let me just say, the chart was really great, but I um, I didn't read all the directions all the way through. So the very first hat I made in the white, I ended up redoing a couple times because it certain sizes you did different number of rows for the you know leaves of the trees here. So I ended up, not paying too much attention and and I was gonna get you know my hat was gonna be really really long for the, the the baby one I did so I had to pay a little bit more attention to the chart because it was one chart for the whole thing but you did like you know rows one through seven and then rows you know ten through 
26 or whatever, you know, so you followed, you, you cut out certain sections depending on the size that you were making, um, unless you were making the full adult large size. So I had to pay attention. It's important to read the pattern. Sometimes a good idea to read it before you actually start knitting it. <laughs> um, but you know, who does that, right? You know, they always say that at the beginning. I know sweater patterns I've gotten have said that too. Like, please be sure to read through the entire pattern before you start. Because sometimes when they're doing like armhole decreases, you're also not only doing armhole decreases, but you're maybe doing a neck thing here at the same time. So kind of funny. Um, but those are my finished objects. I'm really excited because I, I want to give him a new hat for Christmas because his other hat just looked like it was it was getting really small so this one will be perfect and I actually have some yarn I kind of want to make a hat for my myself in the color work because it was really fast like it did this one in you know one day a couple hours you know it was so fast and um, color work hats to me are way easier than like the color work fingerless gloves I was working on or socks I don't know hats I've had no trouble with I've also done like color work cowl type stuff no trouble with that either um, I don't know I think it's something about the socks and and other things I have I get frustrated with maybe it's the weight of the yarn that I'm using where I, you know, I like using fatter gauge stuff for the color work because it goes quicker. But anyway, those are my finished objects. And moving on now to works in progress. And I have a couple things. I almost kind of consider this a finished object. It's not a finished project but it's finished this part of the sweater I did the back of the sweater for my murder and mozzarella cardigan this is um, this funky area down here that's the shaping it's gonna be I think it's gonna be really nice so this is in sweet Georgia worsted color is coral rose and it's this broken rib kind of a Gansey style where you have little stockinette sections and ribbing and it's my own design it's um the sweater itself is the custom fit sweater generator by Amy Herzog and um, you punch in, you do a gauge swatch, you punch in your measurements, you punch in the uh, stitches from your, your particular gauge and it generates a sweater pattern for you, depending on what you've wanted, how you've wanted the sweater to be. If you want it to be a crew neck or a V neck or you know, a boat neck or whatever, and how long you want your arms to be. So you put in all those things and it generates a sweater for you. It's a very cool uh, system because it tells you exactly how many rows you're supposed to go before you do increases and decreases so that some sweater patterns will say, you know, knit till, you know, you're 15 inches from the cast on edge and then you start this well this gives you exactly the amount of rows to do and that will give you your 15 inches because it's based off of your gauge so that's very cool I've done another sweater in this with this sweater generator and I really really liked it a lot so I have the back of my uh, murder and mozzarella cardigan. I think the color will be really pretty. I picked this color because I have some dresses that I made that I think this will go really well with. So it will be something I can wear over the top. And I just have some like brown buttons. I thought that would be pretty. So that's my, my back. I'll be working on 
you know, the two fronts here and the sleeves. And then um, it's a, it's, the sweaters are done in pieces, which I know a lot of people don't like seaming, but there is something nice too with her sweater generator. And the other thing, um, it doesn't require you to do them in pieces. It does give you the option to do them all as seamless as possible. Now you'll, you know, you'll add the front and the back together and then, you know, do the armholes. You still have to do the arms separately, but it gives you uh, an option in the pattern already like pre-made to help you if you don't want to do a front and a back and, and piece it all together. I don't mind piecing it all together. So, but some people hate seaming. I get, I get that. You want to be your project. You want it to be done when you're done and you don't want to have to worry about it. So, but with the seaming, you do get a little bit more structure and the sweater fits a little bit nicer when you have the seams because it gives it a little bit of stiffness, you know, and so it lays really nice and is less slouchy looking, a lot more tailored when you do the seamed sweaters. So that's why I did, I like to do the seamed ones for these. Um, next work in progress is the Kandahar socks. I am doing for my sister and I did a little bit. Um, I have one, which you guys, it looks so small on here, but that's because it's kind of like this ribbed thing. I'm hoping that they fit her. She has big feet. It might not work. She has narrow feet though. Um, you know, if they don't fit, I'll keep them. Um, but I've gotten a little bit further. <laughs> Last time I showed you guys, it just has a little bitty bit of the cuff. So I'm trying to get this project done. It's Kandahar. Alice Yu is the author of the pattern and it is in the Soctopus book that she did. And the yarn is Ancient Arts. The color is Frost Flower. I picked this up when we were in British Columbia this summer and um, I really like working with the yarn. It's really nice. I'm I'm hoping that the, the size will be good enough for her. I might end up, like I said, doing another, doing something else for her instead, but she did pick out this yarn. I paid for it though. So if that counts for anything, I can choose maybe what, it, what I do with it, maybe. I hope it fits her feet. I don't know if it will though. Anyway, the last pair of socks I gave her though, she said were itchy, which I don't know. I don't know what's, you know, she's very sensitive. So maybe these won't work for her, but I'm going to finish them because I need these needles back. That's part of my whole project purge thing, guys. I'm running out of needles. Everything is on, you know, is being used. So I can't work on the purged projects that I need to without getting rid of some of these needles. So like this particular pair, I plan on working on that uh, knitopotamus, the knitted hippo uh, that I was telling you guys about last time. It's like that patchwork hippopotamus that you do hexagons and you kind of piece it together like you do your cozy memory blanket, but you do it in such a way that you've created this knitopotamus, knitted hippo. Um, very cute, but I need those back. So I started back up on these socks. I haven't made a ton of progress yet, but I found the book and we're getting there. We're making we're making a little bit of product progress on that one too. So that's that. And then I think my next work in progress. I picked back up my Camp Wilkerson shawl. This is Sweet Georgia DK the Camp Wilkerson shawl by Caitlin Hunter. And I have 
I'm, on, I'm over halfway done. Now the blue color here is glacier. This like dark is mink and we have silver and the orange is pumpkin. So I'm over halfway. I'm almost done. I plan on knitting until my blue is completely out in that middle section and then picking back up um, and starting on the other side. So I made, I actually, I should put a progress keeper on here, but I didn't, but I probably done a good couple inches on this. And I worked on that a little bit over the weekend. I had to fix it though. So the reason I had set this one down was because during the Tacoma Holiday Food and Gift Festival, when I was working, I thought, oh, I can work on this project. No big deal at all. Um, yeah, I was working on the eyelets. I wasn't counting properly and I made a mistake. And so I put it down intending to fix the mistake later and it sat for a while. So I picked it back up. This has kind of my, been my focus for the last couple weeks. I've done more on this. Um, I finished the back of the sweater. That was also focused. I showed you guys, you know, I made significant progress on that. I had was just on the waist shaping when I last showed that to you guys. So I've been spreading my knitting mojo around because the, the, the idea is to finish some of these projects that have been sitting. And I know the Kandahar socks have been sitting for a while, the Camp Wilkerson shawl sitting for a while. I started it this summer. So I want to finish this as well. This is on a US six or on my Haya Haya interchangeable set. Really like the Haya Hayas. They're nice and, and slick. I like slick. Um, I think in the beginning when I first started knitting, I didn't because things, I would be scared that they would fall off. But I'm much more, um, I like the slick much better. So that's kind of what I've been working on. I did also kind of pull out, um, I pulled out some projects last time to show you that had been sitting in my closet. And one of them I, was that Knitopotamus, the Knitted Hippo, and I still plan on working on that one. Uh, I haven't got to it yet, but the other one was a shawl that I was designing. And I started working on that because that I really had wanted to see if I could finish up. I started working on it and um, it wasn't the, the needles I were, was using. They were an old Addy pair, Addy lace. Addy lace ones are kind of sticky also. And I was having real difficulty with the tension on that needle and things felt like it was pretty tight and, and it wasn't sliding and moving along quickly. And I felt like I was struggling with it. I also felt um, like I, I was confused on where I was on the pattern and I couldn't figure out where I looked for my notes and I couldn't find my notes. I looked on my laptop and I didn't find it there. So I decided to frog that one. So I pulled it out completely. And I don't feel bad about that. Last last episode I talked about how I wanted to finish it I wanted that project well I really do like the yarn um but I felt like where it was going it wasn't going to be very big that amount of yarn that had made that small triangle that was like a kerchief was almost half of the skein and I didn't think that that was going to do well that was wasn't going to make a big enough triangle shawl and if it did, that that's fine, but I just, it could have, I suppose. But the gauge I was getting and then the confusion I was having with the pattern, I just decided, because this is this is all about purging the projects, that that's, that one was going to go and I was going to start something else with it. So I pulled it out. It's no longer on needles and it's all wrapped up in a ball. So I... I'm sorry for you guys if you got excited about that project. I, it's, it no longer exists and I'll have to do something else with that yarn.
but oh well, because that's that's what it is. That's my that, that like I said, that's my goal. I have a bunch of other ones that I'm gonna be pulling out of the closets here and going through, but I'm gonna try to focus on the, the, the few that I've been showing you to to get those done first. And then we'll gradually move more out and decide whether or not I'm gonna keep them or purge them. So yeah. That's that. So those are the things I've been working on. I did have, like I said, I have some acquisitions and one of them is gonna be a prize for you guys. So excited about this. So let's get into that because um, this was this was so fun for me. I have a giant bag here of stuff. I went to one of the local yarn stores here in Portland called Twisted for a Stephen West book signing party. It was so, so much fun. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw I posted a picture of him and I got to meet him and got his book, uh, Stephen West, what is it? West Knits, Best Knits. And it has so many of his shawls in there. Not the most recent one, not the building block shawl, but it's, um, it's all shawls. It has the exploration station. It has dotted rays. Sorry, that's crinkly. It has, um, what's one of the other ones that I'm, there's this Brio Chevron wrap. I mean, just like really fun, fun stuff. And so I got one for myself. Oh, it has the doodler in there. And I got one for you guys. So this is going to be the prize for the 200 subscriber giveaway. It's autographed. It says, keep, I don't know if you can see that. That's really washing out. But it says, keep on knitting, kitten. And um, so that's going to be the prize for the 200 subscriber giveaway. It's the new West Knits Best Knits signed by Stephen West himself. Like I said, I got one for myself and I got one for you guys. So make sure to go on to the website or to the group page and post a little reply to the thread because this is a really good gift. Um, it was so much fun meeting him too, you guys. He was so like like his he had like the crazy clothes on like he always does he had this hat that had like plastic cupcakes on the brim and then a hot pink sequin zip up jacket he had these leggings that were red and green and black and and they were all like geometric shapes and stuff and i mean it was it was it was really fun to meet him and he was so interesting so I think he lives in Amsterdam now but he grew up in I want to say Illinois or Midwest somewhere I think Illinois it might say in the book but and he said you know he says stuff like he, he bo born and fled um, you know this area so uh, he's but he's very off the cuff with a lot of things and had some really fun stuff to say he did a little show and tell kind of after he did the the book signing he showed a lot of he had brought all the shawls with him from the book and kind of did a show and tell and talked a little bit about how you know how you should wear your shawl one of those things being like don't put your shawl on in front of a mirror just put it on and go and don't look at it, you know, because if you look at it, you're going to be trying to make sure it's all symmetrical and symmetrical. He said is boring. So I'm boring. I like symmetrical, but it was really, you know, he was like, just put it on and, and look, you look fabulous, you know? And then he said other things like he kind of has some, some little sayings that are, you know, his and his alone. And, and one of them is more is more and less is a bore. So he talks about, uh, he talked about how, you know, Chanel, one of the major fashion icons of the century, um, how she always talked about how 
when you you're you get ready to go out into the public you just should take off one piece of an accessory before you go out and then you're perfect like she didn't want you to be like less is more for her right it it shouldn't you shouldn't overdo your your accessories and he's like yeah you should put on one extra or two extra before you leave the house and how more is more and less is a bore and he talks about that at um for color choices and um wearing your knitted attire so super fun to meet him he was awesome and if you guys do ever get a chance to go to a little thing a gathering with Stephen west um that was pretty cool. So I think there's one shawl in here that I think I'm gonna do. Um, and it's the, the Starburst one. I think that's the one I'm gonna do. And he does different sizes for things. And I bought some DK weight yarn. So my Starburst shawl will probably end up being quite large. Um, so I did get some yarn while I was there. I bought some and I won some. I never win anything. So let me show you the stuff that I bought first. So the Starburst, the Starburst shawl is a three color shawl or a multicolor shawl. And then there was another one in here that was a brioche one called Excuse Me. And um, I thought I might do that one, but I think I'm going to do the Starburst one with the colors that I chose because I liked, um, I liked the, it is asymmetrical, but it had a really pretty, um, pretty look to it. It was kind of like the doodler a little bit, but um, it had like the braid and everything, but it wasn't as, um, as big as the doodler, but the doodler I liked, but this one. It will be pretty big. Ooh, excuse me. Because I'm using DK weight yarn. And hopefully I'll have enough. So I have my first color. It's just blue. It says just blue. And it is um, Knitted Wit Victory DK. It's 100% Superwash Merino. And there, that's better. Victory DK. And um, yeah, so that's going to be one of the, the main colors. Um, I think it might be the, the accent color and the bits. There's, if you, let me show you on that one. There's these like stripe sections that so here's the three color version of his so I'm thinking that blue is going to be the braid and then those little eyelet sections in between and then each one of those wedges I'm going to do um, I'm going to alternate some colors so I've got two colors for the wedges and I've got this one they're both um, Republic of Wool also DK, 100% Superwash Merino. This first one, oh, the, the light, is this light, speckly, little bit of, you know, hot pinks and blues and yellows. I don't know if that's coming, how well that's coming out, but... It looked really fun. It kind of reminded me of cotton candy a little bit. And I think it's called Crackle, this color. So that's going to be, you know, a section of that. And then this, like, neon, mustard neon. I don't know. I mean, it's like a yellow um, called Sour Puss. Also knitted wit, or sorry, not no, Republic of Wool, excuse me. DK and it's 100% superwash merino as well. So I'm going to do one section of the the speckle and then the blue like stripe in between and then one section of the mustard, the blue stripe and then one section of the speckled and go back and forth with that. 
Um, and then the edge piece is going to be this hot pink. And this is also knitted with, it is Victory DK. And it is called Blush. And it's this hot pink. So these are the three, the four kind of colors. I think those will look really cool together. Um, so I'm excited. That's um, what I'm going to do. Um, his starburst shawl calls for fingering weight. Like I said, I'm going to do uh, the DK. I'm going to do DK weight. And I'm going to do the smaller version in the hopes that I get enough yarn out of it. So we'll see. But that's what I ended up buying at the shop that night. And then they had door prizes for people who showed up. So you bought a ticket. Your ticket included the book, the West Knits book. And then um, it also included, you got a little raffle ticket as well. Um, it was an exclusive kind of little party. So only they only sold so many tickets. And so that way it wasn't like overcrowded. It was really nice and intimate. And, um, and then, yeah, they did door prizes. And you guys, honestly, I never win anything. And my raffle ticket number was the first number drawn, the very first number. And I won some freaking awesome stuff. So I can't believe how much of this that I won. It is, I won these two ginormous, ginormous skeins of yarn from Blue Moon Fiber Arts. They are here uh, locally in Oregon. And look at these. I mean, they're totally my colors, like perfect, perfect colors. And I have enough to do a sweater here probably. I mean, this is like, it's like ridiculous how much yarn this is. And so the color is Flamingo Feet. It's a single silky tarhi, targi maybe. It is 70% targi wool, 30% unbleached tussa silk. Uh, it is approximately 696 yards per skein. 696 yards in one of these bad boys. I am so, so freaking excited. I can't even tell you, like, I was floored that I actually won something and that it was this. Like, this is, like, the coolest. So I have plans for this, too. I've been wanting to make the Sizzle Pop shawl, and I'm thinking I have this um, cream Peruvian alpaca. And I have two giant skeins of that. And I'm thinking I'm gonna make a sizzle pop shawl with that. It's gonna be so squishy and it'll almost probably end up being like a blanket. But, because I asked, I said, well, what is the weight on this? And she was saying she thought it was like a worsted, that she thought it was worsted. So I think that'll be cool. And so one of the sides will be the cream with the color coming through and the other side will be this bright. And I think that will go really, really well together. So that's the plan for this stuff. And I just, I can't even say how excited I was to win this stuff. Like it was awesome, so awesome. So that is what I won at the little um, gathering. You guys, it was so much fun. Um, I always, I went by myself, which I get a little like weird sometimes when I'm by myself. I get a little like feel socially awkward when I'm by myself, but it was really great. And the people there were really nice. And I was so glad that I went, had a really good time. So if you guys get a chance to do something like that where you can go to like an exclusive little thing, you should totally do it because it was way fun and very much worth it, the experience. And to meet Stephen West, 
yeah, I, it was, it was awesome. So that is going to be you, you guys, one of my lovely viewers who goes on and answers the question. What was your, um, what's your most favorite project to have knit or crochet? What's the most favorite one you've ever done and why? Um, I will post that up there and I want to hear your guys' answers and then I will use random number generator to draw um, and one of you guys is going home with this signed copy of West Knits Best Knits. So yay! And then I don't know guys I'm thinking of maybe hosting a knit along for one of these. So we'll see. I, I'm, I'm waiting until after Christmas to do any knit alongs because I know you all are very much um, probably busting out the Christmas presents right now. And um, maybe when we get to selfish knitting month in January, we can do our own little knit along for that. So let's see. Um, today's the 12th, two weeks. It's going to be the 26th. So I probably won't see you guys again until after Christmas. So if you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to all of you. Um, and so I'll see you before the new year. And maybe after, since it'll be after Christmas, we'll talk about uh, a knit along for the new year. So have a great day, everyone. Be inspired. Get out there. Be crafty. Be wonderful. And put your vibes out there in the world. And it'll be great. It's great. And I love, I love, love this community and I can't wait to see and hear from all of you and see all the things that you guys have been doing. I'll talk to you guys later.